uh, we're here in front of our St. Junipero Cerro Chapel and this week we're doing something a little bit differently for our ministry minutes. We are going to talk about vocations and so we all kind of started thinking about the different ways that we are called to serve God. Uh, we're here serving in youth ministry. Other people are called to be teachers and uh, essential workers and catechists and things like that. And we had the opportunity to sit down with Father John, Sister Danielle, and Father Rod, and they kind of shared their stories about how they got started in their vocations. So uh, stay tuned, and if you guys feel called to do so, please share down in the bottom what you feel God is calling you to right now. Or if you're still trying to think about it and you need some prayers, shout it out down below, and uh, we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Father Rod Craig. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Fresno. I'm very happy to share a little bit about my vocation story. And I was born in 1951 in Wasco on the corner of 7th and Broadway. And it was a maternity home, no hospital in those days. And uh, grew up, I'm the oldest of four boys. And the day before I was born, some friends of ours had gotten married. And my mom and dad both worked. And so basically this family raised me while my mom and dad worked and I became a part of their family, the Baron and Ash family, as well as my own family. And uh, my grandmother, my mom's mom, came from a large family. She had 86 first cousins. And so we had a lot of family and the other family was also very large. And it was really kind of cool growing up that way because I got to know a lot of people and find myself at ease at anybody's birthday party or anniversary or just going out to the ranch and playing. So it was a lot of fun. and growing up that way and then my parents and the people that raised me uh, ended up being in charge of the CYO, Catholic Youth Organization at that time and uh, so they did that for several years and my brothers and I were all too young to participate by the age but because we were the siblings uh, we got to travel along and it was really neat to see my parents and this other couple ministering to people. My dad wasn't Catholic, he was Methodist, raised Methodist, he didn't really go to the Methodist Church sang in our choir and participated. Um, both my grandmothers uh, were very active in their parish. Uh, my grandma Craig uh, played the piano in the Methodist Church and taught Sunday school over there. It was very active in their activities. And my grandma Boffman lived in Shafter and she was a uh, cook for all the big dinners and everything. And both my parents and uh, my grandmothers were involved in the sanctuary and cleaning the altars and everything. And as a little kid, I had to go over and help her out. And, that was okay. That one thing that my grandma Craig with the Methodist Church would go to the rest home, and my grandmother would take a birthday cake to everybody selling their birth celebrating their birthday. So I'd have to go with her, and I kept saying, "Grandma, you're older than these people," and I then had to sing happy birthday to them and give them a hug and a kiss. And as a kid, I just hated doing that, you know. But anyway, I, I did it for a long time with my grandma Craig. Um, my mom worked in a drugstore, and in the sixth or seventh grade. I started working there sweeping and cleaning and, and unpacking packages and became a clerk and everything. And so part of me wanted to be a pharmacist and I really enjoyed working at the drugstore and I love seeing how the pharmacist in those days, sometimes people would come in and call him doctor and he'd take time listening to them and helping them out and solve some problems and then work in the pharmacy. In those days, they would sometimes have to mix their own compounds and stuff. So I really thought that'd be kind of cool. And you know, I eventually got to the point where I was unpacking the drugs and putting them away and got to know the medications. And kind of a past time, I'd read the medical formulas that came with all the medications and stuff. And that's kind of a stupid thing for a junior high kid to do. But anyway, I kind of thought, well, maybe this is where I'm going to go. Um, I was active in our parish as an altar server. And uh, again, had gone to Catholic school and the nuns were very, very good. Sisters, uh, Franciscan sisters from Glen Riddle, Pennsylvania. But they're all basically Irish sisters. And uh, they talked about vocations a lot. And just before my first communion, a new priest came to the parish and he was there for 17 years. And he was out on the schoolyard and very active. And he was real good to us as uh, altar servers. And so I kind of thought, well, maybe I'd like to be a priest. And I had cousins that were in the seminary. And you know, there a lot of guys from Wasco had gone into the seminary. Only two of us are ordained from Wasco, Steve Frost down in Oildale and myself ordained uh, 1977, Stephen the weekend before I was ordained. Um, so anyway, I wanted to go and uh, my parents were pretty strong on not going to the high school seminary. Monsignor Hurtigan wanted to send me to the Josephinum, but it heard that the high school might be closing. 
so I didn't think that would be a good idea. I stayed home and went to uh, Wasco High for one year, and then uh, kind of persuaded my parents in letting me apply for the seminary, and got a letter saying I was accepted. And uh, they weren't really too happy about that. They thought I was too young and you shouldn't be doing that. But uh, anyway, I entered in 1966. It was right after the changes of Vatican II. When I entered the Mass, was still in Latin, and then it changed in um, first Sunday in Advent to part of it being in English. Father John, I think, said something about that in his vocation story. Um, I really enjoyed Ryan. It was so funny. I uh, never got homesick or fell out of place. It just was a wonderful place. The, we had 10 Jesuits that taught us uh, there. We were about 120 students, four years of high school and two years of college. And the Jesuits were fantastic. And I remember sitting in the religion class and at one point, uh, the uh, priest said something about uh, our religion having to change our lives. And they were teaching me deeper things that I had learned in CCD and in the Catholic grammar school. And I kept thinking, oh man, if they're teaching me this stuff, I'm gonna really have to live it. And I really remember going through some qualms of conscious thinking, maybe I better get out right now so I don't have to live this kind of life. But uh, anyway, I kept going and I really enjoyed it. And ended up from high school, after I graduated, went to the Josephine in Columbus, Ohio. And again, it was a time after the council and uh, the seminary there had adapted quite a bit to changes. And uh, I really enjoyed being there at the Josephine in College. They were fantastic. I could have gone to theology there, but I found it might be too easy for that transition. And uh, being that I'd have to move around a lot as a priest, I thought I better do something a little more challenging. So when it came to uh, going to theology, I wanted to uh, not come back to California. And I just did not want to go to one particular seminary especially. I just found it too conservative and I felt too restrained there. And uh, so then I started asking the bishop at that time about going to Rome or going to uh, Collegeville or going to Notre Dame. And you know, I ended up at Catholic University of Washington, D.C. and living at Theological College. And that was a really good move for me, but I have to say that it was very hard for me to adjust. It was so totally different than anything I'd gone through before. But I have to say, it changed my life tremendously. If I had not gone there, I think I would have been a very, very different man, a very different priest. So I met the challenges there and then ended up the last two years really, really enjoying it. And love being in Washington and all the things I experienced. I had incredible professors. And then through the ministry department, you know, wonderful examples of pastoral care. And I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, I was to be ordained a deacon in May of uh, 1976. But, and I had applied and petitioned and the date was all set, but I really began to have some second thoughts because um, I didn't know if I had really made a deep enough personal commitment. Everything kind of flowed and was easy enough for me. The academics at the university were a little difficult, but I was making it through, but I just wasn't really sure if I was ready. So I canceled my diaconate and stayed back in Washington the summer of 76. And uh, then after quite a bit of discernment, I uh, decided that yes, I would go ahead. And, and Bishop Dono came back and ordained me in November of 76 the diaconate. And then I was set for priesthood in May of 77. My first assignment was at Our Lady of Victory in Fresno. And you know, the, it was a wonderful parish, an incredible sense of community, uh, hospitality of welcoming a new priest. And I was there with Monsignor A's, Father Bill Stinger. And it was just really wonderful. I really liked it and enjoyed it. But then again, I got a little bit restless. Um, after my first year of uh, being ordained, the bishop uh, invited us to, uh, a couple of us, to teach at San Joaquin Memorial. And I always wanted to be a teacher, and so I was really glad to take that on. So I was assigned there and uh, taught religion to juniors and seniors. And I stayed there for five and a half years and made great friendships, relationships at Memorial. Uh, a lot of those people from Our Lady Victory and uh, Memorial, I'm still very, very close to doing weddings and baptisms for them, for their children, and now even for their grandkids. So it's really kind of a cool thing to have that kind of long relationship with people. Um, as I taught at Memorial, I was kind of free on certain weekends. And so there came an opening up in Yosemite and Bishop Madera asked if I would be willing to take on Yosemite as a temporary assignment. Well, I ended up being there for five and a half years also. 
And uh, then part of that was uh, in Mariposa. I loved Yosemite. I was young, I was athletic, I did a lot of hiking and worked both with the Park Service and the Curry Company, helping in ministry, helping the people who are visitors to the park and uh, doing weddings and then sometimes a funeral service if somebody died up there. I really enjoyed that and Monsignor Walsh in Mariposa was a great example for me and good mentor, I appreciated that. Uh, then I had the opportunity to go to St. Anthony's in Atwater and I was there for eight years and it had a school, two churches, it had a Portuguese community, Mexican community and Anglo community. And so it was interesting trying to juggle all of that and my Spanish was not very good and uh, but I got to say mass, celebrate mass in Spanish, do all the sacraments. The Portuguese I tried, but I was not very good at the Portuguese. I let that go. When one man said, it's real cute when you read the gospel in Portuguese. I thought, I'm not here to be cute, so I quit. But uh, anyway, I really enjoyed the Portuguese community there and working some of the festas. Um, after eight years at Atwater, uh, Bishop Steinbach asked me to be vocation director. So it was about eight years uh, and vocation work in Fresno. And again, enjoyed that simultaneous with that. Worked at St. Jude's in Easton. And that was supposed to be a very temporary assignment, but it lasted like five years. So it wasn't as temporary. You know, the priests following me have done a great job in the parish there. Um, but I've had wonderful experiences. You know, God has really graced me and been with me. And the people have supported me, even in growing up when I was in the seminary, the local parish was always praying for me, uh, encouraging me. Uh, the Knights of Columbus, I was a charter member of the Squires in Wasco, and they were just always so supportive in the Altar Society. So I've really had a wonderful people encouraging me, and that I hope has brought out the best in me. You know, when I was being ordained, I told some of my classmates and friends, that, you know, I'm going to do this for 10 years, and then think, you know, is this really my vocation? Am I going to be happy? And they're like, you can't say that. I mean, you're being ordained for life forever. I said, well, I know that, but I've got to make sure I'm happy. And if I'm not happy, I don't want to stay and make other people unhappy and stuff. So anyway, I was kind of like the only character that, that I knew of that had that attitude. Well, 10 years after my ordination, uh, I became a very uh, 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 progressive alcoholic and ended up going for treatment uh, several times uh, over a long period of time. And I finally ended up at Guest House in Minnesota and it had nine and a half years of sobriety and then relapsed. Three years, three times later, I went back in the winters. And uh, finally, thanks be to God, I'm sober today and uh, really appreciate the bishop's uh, patience with me and the, the gift that the guest house was for me back in Rochester. So uh, my story has been one of weaving in and out and uh, loving the ministry. I never lost faith in the ministry. I times lost faith in myself especially because of my alcoholism. But again, Bishop Seinbach especially was so encouraging and I appreciate that. So here I am, uh, be 43 years in May, May 21st, I'm ordained and hope I have a number of years of ministry left in me. I really enjoy it and I can't fathom any uh, life without ministry. So thank you very much. Please pray for me, pray for our seminarians and pray for the priests that we have in our diocese and for our bishop. Thank you, God bless you.